Let's get into it. Uh, a lot of good stuff to get into. Obviously, some Clemson discussion today uh, after what we saw on Monday night. Um, and then I, we've got to talk about the Pac-12. And I know many people are talking about it, but we've got to talk about it here and and give you some perspective. And then let's check in on some fan bases after week one, because I'm sure that there's some out there that might be a little too confident and maybe others that we might need to talk back off the ledge after one week. So let's get into it. Clemson. That was pretty disappointing if you're a Clemson fan. And I think that's an understatement. Seven points on four trips inside the 10-yard line. That's never going to cut it. You're always going to get beat regardless of who you play. And now Clemson has lost three of the last four games overall and four of their last seven with three of those four losses by at least 17 points. Okay, so... It's not going in the right direction for Clemson. And this is a program that we constantly feel like, okay, are they going to get back to this, this point to which they were a few years ago? And let's face it, like they had gone to the mountaintop. <laughs> they, they had put themselves on top of the mountain, beating Alabama in the national championship game a couple of times, you know, beating Ohio State in a playoff, going back to they, I mean, they were constantly in it. It was Alabama and Clemson. It wasn't Alabama and Georgia. It was Alabama and Clemson. And then we've started to see that deteriorate a little bit, which begs the question, like, what happened? And where are we at right now with Clemson? They went to six straight playoffs. They won two national championships. And then they finished outside of the top 10 in each of the last two seasons. So we're seeing the start of the slow deterioration. It was all over social media, you know, like the reaction, just that they didn't have the players that they normally have. And this is something that I, I want to point to just, just first, before I get into kind of the anatomy of a decline, I, I will say like, when it comes to college football, it always happens slowly and then bursts open all at one time. I know that those are contradictions, but think of like, let's say Texas is a great example. Texas was deteriorating from within. Those problems were being masked by guys like Vince Young and Colt McCoy, most, mostly Colt McCoy. They just weren't recruiting at the same level. The program, the, the assistant coaches weren't coaching at the same level, developing at the same level. And then all of a sudden, Colt McCoy walks out the door and it's like, whoa, we have a problem here at Texas. Well, that's, that's a slow deterioration that's happening. And then all of a sudden, it's like, there's a tipping point. And with Clemson, we seem to have fallen over that tipping point. Now, maybe you can just point to Trevor Lawrence walking out the door. Maybe that's it. Maybe Deshaun Watson and, and Trevor Lawrence were masking what's going on. Maybe this is analogous to Texas in that you had this amazing team and roster under Vince Young like Clemson did under Deshaun Watson with great defensive linemen. And maybe that, that roster then kind of leaked into the next era, which was Trevor Lawrence or in Texas's case, Colt McCoy. But then all of a sudden that roster clearly deteriorates and then that guy walks out the door and you're just left like, what happened? Well, let's talk about what happens. What does the decline, the, the anatomy of a decline look like in college football? And I'm, it, I think it's really about two things and two ways that programs deteriorate. You deteriorate because of wrong personnel, and that can be either in the coaching staff or in recruiting and talent acquisition, and or you fail to adapt. Sometimes both, sometimes all of those things, sometimes one or the other. And the adapting comes in both on the field and off the field as a program. So there's a lot of layers to this, but really they fall into these, these two categories, okay? So when you think about wrong personnel, you think of programs that maybe hired the wrong guy and then it was a slow deterioration. Programs like, let's say, Nebraska after Frank Solich. It wasn't good enough to retain Frank Solich after a 10-win season, and so they went to Bill Callahan. He changes everything. That's the wrong personnel. Okay, so the deterioration starts to happen right there because of a coaching change. We also saw this, I'll bring up Texas again under Mac Brown. He couldn't get the assistant coaches right. So while he was still there, the revolving door of the assistant coaches starts to come in. And what, what do you happen? A personnel issue. And, and when you have that personnel issue, what happens is that you don't acquire the talent necessary and you don't develop the talent necessary to compete at the highest level because it's still a small margin. 
And let me just back up and, and say, like, all of this can be true. And it's going to seem like I'm I'm putting, you know, Clemson, you know, dead and buried. And I'm not going to do that. OK, this is just an anatomy of a decline. And this is what Dabo is going to have to fight because all of this can be true. Like Duke is better than we thought. Clemson made a ton of mistakes, probably could have won the game in, in certain scenarios, maybe not, you know, eight out of 10 times, but certainly all those trips inside of the 10 yard line would have made that a different game. If they play again, maybe Clemson could win. I'm not sure. But the fact remains, there has been a deterioration. The question is how far, how far and, and what of those two points of deterioration is taking place at Clemson? Is it a personnel issue and is it failing to adapt? There's a lot of talk about the failing to adapt and I'll get into that in a moment. But I think that there is a clear personnel issue at Clemson. Maybe that's the fact that Dabo has not adjusted or adapted as it relates to staff. I mean, he kept the same staff forever. And, you know, I kind of commend him for that, to be quite honest with you. Those men got him to the mountaintop and then he kept them there for a long time. But the, the fact remains, they were not recruiting at the same level. All right. Now, a lot of factors in that, but... Their personnel right now is not where it needs to be on the field. They have not acquired the talent nor developed the talent to play at the upper echelons of college football because that's the expectation, right? For Clemson, I think that it is, in particular when you've got a track record of two national titles since 2015 and six straight playoffs from 15 to 2020. That's what we expect. Now we get into the second part of this, which is the failing to adapt. This can happen for a coaching staff on the field. It can happen off the field. I think it's it's clear, painfully, that Clemson has both failed to adapt on and off the field. Dabo is unapologetically against NIL and transfer portal. Completely against it. Will not embrace it. He has been so public about this that it's going to end up hurting him because the fan base, if you're a Clemson fan, you're like, hold on, man, you, you can't play Monopoly and decide on your own that you're not going to buy any houses on the property you own because you don't think it's right while everybody else buys houses. You're going to lose. I, there's, there's no other way around that. You can stand on principle, or in this case, his principle, which, by the way, none of it is against the rules, so it's his principle. You will lose. It's really a bottom line proposition. And we've seen this time after time after time in the history of college football. Let me just give you, give you like some examples of this. We're seeing this in real time, but it's happened... With, with other issues that programs failed to adapt to throughout history. And I've talked about this sometimes, but let's just talk about these two issues, right? Whether it's personnel and or adapting. Nebraska, they didn't adapt for a long time from, from a schematic standpoint. Then all of a sudden they, they freaked out and, and went a different direction in personnel and you see what's happened to them, Bill Callahan. Texas, I think the same thing happened. I've mentioned that. On the field, how about some examples of teams that were starting to starting to decline and then pulled themselves out of that very quickly and turned it around? So how about a couple of examples, three more specifically, of programs that adapted and evolved quickly? How about Gary Patterson at TCU? Do you remember when he was all defense, no offense for a number of years, won a Rose Bowl, did all this good stuff. And then all of a sudden it became painfully clear to him, I better have a spread offense in particular in this conference. And what did he do? He went out and hired Sonny Cumbie and Doug Meacham and he got Trevon Boykin at quarterback and boom, all of a sudden they were, you know, a win away from the college football playoff. Same thing happened with Bob Stoops. Bob Stoops looked at his personnel, in particular his coaching staff, and he said, you know what? We're not recruiting at the right level and we're not we're not putting our players in position like I know we need to. He went out, he hired Lincoln Riley, a number of new staff members. And what happened? They took off and their run continued. He adapted. Nick Saban adapted. 
This is the most famous one. Now, he never really took a dip, but let's face it, it started to become much harder for Nick Saban in Alabama to win the style of football that he wanted to win with when he first started winning championships. And then he started facing guys like Cam Newton and Johnny Menzel and Deshaun Watson. And he was like, okay, nope. Not going to do this. Uh, this is too difficult. Let's change. All of a sudden, Lane Kiffin's the coordinator, and they change their style of offense, and obviously the rest is history, competing for national championships, all the like. Those are examples of programs adapting, head coaches adapting and evolving and, and really to the benefit of the program. And then there's examples of off-field programs that didn't adapt. And I've talked about this on, on the show. 20 years ago, there was a clear arms race in college football. There was an arms race in facilities. There was an arms race in how much you would pay your coach, how much you would pay your assistants, uh, assistant coaches. How, how long were the contracts that you would give assistant coaches? All of this became like a big deal in college about 20 years ago. There were programs that were playing at the top of college football at that point and failed to adapt and said, no, 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 we'll be fine. Look at the name on the front of our jersey. We don't have to participate in that. I think of programs like USC and Miami. They didn't invest in their facilities like the other programs were investing, and so they got passed. There were other programs like that as well. Then you have programs that leaned into it with, with no history 20 years ago and became you know household teams and have been now top 20 programs, top 10 programs basically since. I'm thinking of a team like Oregon. Okay, so there are examples of this. Off-field issues and surrounding college football where you've got to lean into something that maybe you're uncomfortable with. Maybe it costs a lot of money. I'm not sure. Whatever it is, okay? Maybe you, your principles, I, I don't know. But if you don't evolve and adapt, you will die. This is, this is tried and true across the history of the sport. And now we are at another tipping point. This it's, it's clear as day to everybody out there. If you do not participate in the transfer portal and NIL, you will lose. If you don't want to, then you're going to have to be fine with the consequences of not participating in those two ventures. Because right now, it is crystal clear. Based on the year we had a year ago and what we've seen already early in this season, that college football is a new frontier. It is completely changing based on the transfer portal. Two biggest wins of week one, Florida State, Keon Coleman, he, he was out there. They, they did it through transfers. They had one of the best transfer classes in the country. They got the best player off three, four, five different teams to come to Florida State. Okay, Colorado, 68 new scholarship players. Basically remade a roster through the transfer portal. Two biggest wins of week one. Meanwhile, the team and coach that refuse to play in that game, refuse to put houses on Park Place, got beat 28 to 7. You see... The sport has changed. We no longer build rosters in college football through a three-year cycle of talent acquisition and development. That's gone. That's gone. That's when you can rely on your culture. Okay? Now, this is much more like the NFL. This is much more like a GM putting together a new roster every year. These are annual things. College football is an annual thing. You look around college football, and every single year, someone is going to improve themselves to the point where they pass someone in their conference that we didn't think that they would pass. And guess what's happened in the ACC? At least after one week, it's pretty clear. Florida State, better than Clemson. And I wouldn't have said that coming into the season. I was one of the ones harping on the fact that I thought Clemson and their culture and Garrett Riley like, was going to work. Nope. Didn't work. Wasn't on the field week one, certainly. They have, they have a lot to clean up. Meanwhile, Florida State, fast, physical, great players on the outside, really good quarterback. Now I'm going to be surprised if Clemson can beat Florida State, even in their home stadium. It happens like that in college football. It's a one-year cycle now, not three. Adapt or die. 
Thank you for watching the Joel Clashio YouTube channel. And if you liked this clip, make sure to like it and subscribe to the channel. And you can stay up to date on all of my college football coverage.